How do you describe a Pastor Harold Stinson in five words? A servant called by God. In the future. Cannot see through dark clouds. Oh, no. We cannot see. Walk on by faith each, each day. Can I tell you what to do? On Monday, walk on. Even on Tuesday, walk on. Let, let Jesus, let him be. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Lucretia Faison, the pastor of St. Paul United Methodist Church in downtown Dallas. And today we're going to have a little bit of conversation with Pastor Harold Stinson, who has been over pastoral care at St. Paul for now 16 years and has entered into a new phase in ministry called retirement. So we wanted to take some time today to talk with Pastor Harold about his journey uh, and about what the Lord has in store for him next. Good morning, Pastor Harold. Good morning, How Dr. Faison. I am blessed. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank awesome. you. Well, listen, we want to just talk a little bit about your ministry today and your time here at St. Paul. Why don't we start by talking about um, your call to ministry. Tell us a little bit about your ministry journey. Back when um, Pastor Elsie Odom was the senior pastor at St. Paul, he called me into his office one day and he says, Harold, I have a question for you. You seem to have been working with Congregational Care unofficially for so long and you do it so well. Uh, what do you think about uh, being appointed uh, as associate pastor over Congregational Care? I said, wow, me? Yeah. He says, yes. And we began that uh, process after that, and uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. Awesome, awesome. What will you remember most about your time at St. Paul? What are some of your fond memories here? There are many, but I think what really stands out the most is when we've had members who have had death or illness in their families and I was the first person that they called. Um, I remember one member I visit with her in the hospital and she says, Pastor, I don't want anybody standing up over me but you <laughs> at my funeral. You don't want me to get up out of that casket, okay? <laughs> I says, okay, sister, we'll do. <laughs> that is wonderful. What a wonderful memory to have. What would you say has been something that's challenged you in ministry?
probably back in 05, my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer. And I became his primary caregiver. And during that same time, I was still ministering uh, to the members of St. Paul. And I was fully employed at the same time. And trying to balance those three responsibilities was a challenge, but it was also a blessing. It really kept me balanced. Wow. It's amazing how God gives us the grace to lead even when we're bleeding, right? Amen. It's a, a Amen. powerful testimony. So what's next for you? What's, what are you looking forward to as you enter into uh, retirement? Although, you know, we never retire from ministry, really, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, a lot of the members who said, oh, Pastor, you're retiring. What are we going to do? I said, well, no, nah, wait a minute. I'm stepping down from Congregational Carol, but I'm not stepping out. Amen. Um, I have been called as a, to Christianity and to, a, to ministry as long as God has, has given me breath. But probably the underlying um, challenge that I have um, is a chronic um, health issue that I have. And really not knowing where that's going to go, I felt that it was unfair to the St. Paul family to conti continue in my responsibility as a ministry leader and not knowing how my health uh, was going to impact that. Mm. So I felt that this was the time, especially during this pandemic, mm -hmm. when uh, uh, I've been limited as to how I can minister now, how I can minister now. We're not able to minister to our peoples that we have in the past. And uh, I really had to come to grips with that. I understand, that can be challenging. It is. We will certainly be in prayer with you and for you as you uh, just continue to seek God's will during this time. So what words of encouragement would you leave with St. Paul as you take this next step into retirement? First of all, um, well, let me say this. Uh, years ago, the senior pastor um, that I was under, I was his personal deacon. And he says, uh, Deke, um, I may be dead and gone before you understand what's going on, but love your people and your people will love you. And that has been the foundation for the work I've tried to do for God. I've tried to exhibit that love to these people called St. Paul and in return, they have responded back to me with that same love. St. Paul knows that I love them from the bottom of my heart, not because of a position that man has given me, but what God has given me for a time such as this. I will always love, I'm a part of you. I'm a member of this congregation. We're brothers and sisters. And we will continue to walk as brothers and sisters till God calls us home. Amen. That sounded like a sermon to me. Well. <laughs> Listen, God bless you. Thank you so much for your service to St. Paul. We look forward to how God is going to use you even in retirement and to continue to be in relationship and fellowship. Thank you so much, Dr. Crazy. Amen. Thank God you. bless. Hello, everyone. This is Hakeem Williams. South uh, SPPR chair along with my co-chair Aaron Black and on behalf of our F SPPR and behalf of the church 
uh, we want to give a personal uh, gift to Pastor Stinson. Pastor Stinson, this is on behalf of SPPR and the church. Um, as a personal antidote, I've been doing Pastor Stinson since I've been here in St. Paul, um, since I was working downtown when Pastor Stinson was working at the post office. Uh, he literally was my uh, consigliere, if you will, when it comes to religious topics of all things, and he always has been. So I appreciate him. I appreciate his service from a personal perspective. And on behalf of the church and the SPPR team, we appreciate and love him for all, for all that he's done for everyone in this church, whether they're the sick and shut in, someone needs prayer. He has always, always been there morning, noon, night, weekends. You talk about 24-7. That's Harold Stinson. So we appreciate and love you and thank you. thank you. My name is Richard Stewart, and I am pleased to give a shout out and a salute to Pastor Harold Stinson. I have known Pastor Stinson for almost 50 years. We served together in 1971 during the Vietnam War on the USS New Orleans LPH-11. At that time, Harold was one of the ship's navigators and part of his responsibility was making sure that the ship knew where its location was and also assisting in making sure that we got to our destinations. When I moved to Dallas in 1994, I was pleased to learn that Pastor Stinson was a member of St. Paul United Methodist Church and in fact that he was an associate pastor. He did a great job. He was very assiduous in performance of his duties, and he had the confidence of all the congregants in St. Paul. So I take great pride in saluting Pastor Stinson, and as we would say in the Navy, uh, fair winds and following seas. Hello, St. Paul United Methodist Church and friends. I am privileged to have this opportunity to pay tribute to Pastor Harold Wesley Stinson, Jr., who has shown me, as long as I was a member at this church, great kindness and love. When I first met Pastor Stinson, he said to me how much I reminded him of his father, the Pastor Harold Wesley Stinson, Sr. Once we became real close, we were inseparable. I could call on him for anything I needed, and he knew he could do the same for me. There was a time when I had to be admitted into the hospital, and that morning of my admission, he was there waiting on me and rolled me in the wheelchair to the area of the hospital that I had to go. I would just personally like to take this opportunity to pay tribute and thank you, Pastor Stinson, for all the courtesies that you have shown me during this friendship. You have truly impacted my life, and I wish many, many favorable blessings on you as you enjoy your retirement. Thank you. My name is Rhonda Benton, and I am a longtime member of St. Paul. It is with the utmost gratitude and respect that I am humbled to present this reflection of Pastor Harold Wesley Stinson, Jr. To reflect on Pastor Stinson is to make reference to one of his favorite scriptures, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving and the peace of God transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. These verses reflect the compassion, confidence, and congregational care of Pastor Stinson. On this day, with gratitude and thankfulness from the St. Paul congregation, me and my family and others, we would like to thank you for your service. I would like to leave you with this song, May the work that I've done speak for me. And you have done the work. I'm William Hardeman, member of St. Paul United Methodist Church. And I've been here since I was here when Harold Stinson, Reverend Stinson, first came to St. Paul. And he came with an attitude of gracefulness and understanding and love, and you could see God in it. Since then, we became real good friends, my husband, my brother, 
my sister, my whole family have, we have relied on him like he was our, own, he was a member of our family. And we pray and everything's all right. He's just been our rock. He's been our right hand from the Hardeman family, Gates family, Bell family, all of my family. We wish you good luck and success in whatever you do and everything that you do from now on, but don't forget about us. How do you describe a Pastor Preston Weaver in five words? A servant that trusts God.
I'm Dr. Lucretia Faison, the senior pastor of St. Paul United Methodist Church downtown, coming to you this morning with the right Reverend Preston Weaver, who's been the executive pastor here for three years, but in ministry in the North Texas Conference for 19 years. And the Lord is moving him on to the next phase of ministry called retirement. Although you never really retire from ministry, right, Pastor? That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, God bless you and thank you for being here today. So Thank why don't you start by sharing with us your ministry journey? How did you get started and how did you, how did God get you going and get you into ministry? Well, the ministry started, uh, the initial call was I was at the age of seven. Wow. Um, I was, my uh, cousins and I were in the yard and I looked at, uh, and read the Bible regularly and I memorized uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 and uh, was out in the yard preaching to my cousins and so we were having church we were actually playing church wow. and my grandfather heard us playing church and then the Holy Spirit while we were uh, having this came over us and mm. my grandfather said well okay you're gonna preach that Sunday morning Wow! and, and he was the pastor of a uh, holiness church mm -hmm. in Mineola Texas and he um, asked us to be there and I preached that little sermon again oh and, and that was the last time I preached <laughs> Because from that point on, I said, well, you know, I looked at, uh, I knew that was the call of my life, mm -hmm. but I looked at the lives of clergy and, and the labor that it required, and, and I said, no, that's not what the Lord is calling me to do. Mm -hmm. And then as, and then I would continue to get the prompting, and everywhere I went uh, through all the different careers I had, I was always in church, mm -hmm. and I was, always had a relationship with, with, the, with clergy. Mm -hmm. uh, even during the armed forces, I had a relationship with the chaplain that, wow. everywhere I went. And, and, and was engaged in ministry uh, as a layperson during that time. And I always thought that lay ministry was my calling. Uh, became a lay servant uh, and a lay uh, speaker at the same time, became the lay leader here at St. Paul uh, with uh, Ron Henderson as well as uh, Dr. Henry Masters. And out of that, uh, they began to remind me that uh, God is has a call on your yeah. life, and, and, and what you're doing, and that's not, not it. Away. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not it. And then uh, I was working at Brinker International, and I had a really uh, spiritual awakening a while there. You know, in the, back in the day when people would send you a an email and have a, a message, a, a video message, and this video message really spoke to me. And, and, I, and I cried while I was sitting in front of the, the laptop. And, and I went to, and I told Henry about it. And he said, well, the Lord is telling you, it is now, now's yes. the time. And so I said, I, I trusted his uh, in, input and uh, decided that I'm gonna be, uh, go to Perkins and went to Inside Perkins to find out what, what seminary was mm -hmm. like. And while there, I met uh, Dr. Ben uh, Affleck, who, uh, was really uh, one who I, the Lord, I think the Lord put in the hallway for me to meet. And then uh, he became, Bert Affleck, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we became uh, good friends and he sort of mentored me through the process. And, his, and, and, and I think he's still mentoring me from, from on high. Uh -huh. uh, I had many, many, many persons who uh, supported me uh, when I made the decision and discerned what the Lord was calling me to do. And, and then the journey has been joyous ever since. That's wonderful. And Isn't it amazing how God will just set you up and, and put people <laughs> in your path and that will help you and encourage you along the way. What have been some of your um, memorable moments here at St. Paul? Well, ooh, that, that's, that's a long history. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up here at St. Paul and uh, every time, in fact, every time I go up and down the stairwell, mm -hmm. I remember when they were uncarpeted and we, would, we intentionally would go up and down the stairs, at least the boys would, and make noise. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, cause it sounded like drum rolls. <laughs> and so, uh, but those, I had some wonderful memories here. Um, uh, Dr. I.B. Lau was one of the primary influences in my life. Mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up, I often was, I was not the angel <laughs> uh, that many people thought I no. should have been. <laughs> and so oftentimes I would have to go to, I would go to him and seek counsel mm -hmm. uh, because I would I was not uh, I pre appeared to be an angel but uh, <laughs> I was not and, and some of the elders of, of St. Paul will remember those days when, <laughs> when I, I had to be pulled aside and reminded that hey you 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 need to be obedient uh, I have a, a mother who was pretty much uh, very disciplinarian 
but oftentimes I would sneak outside that discipline. <laughs> Of course. And then Dr. Lai would see it and <laughs> say, come on, old boy, get over here. <laughs> and you need, you need to uh, uh, change the way you're living. Uh, my greatest joy was singing uh, in the music ministry here at St. Paul. God blessed me with the gift of singing, and, and I just loved it and still love it to this day. And uh, I'm, I'm fortunate at my age to be able, still able to hit the high notes. All so, right, all right. All <laughs> so right. I'm, I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> what will you miss? Uh, about being um, an active ministry? The people. Um, ministry for me is, has always been to be able to, to share the gospel, mm -hmm. but love the people. I just love people, and especially uh, persons who are disenfranchised and in mm -hmm. the margins. Mm -hmm. uh, while serving at Central Dallas Ministries, now City Square, uh, I was I had the opportunity to, to be able to influence the lives of uh, ex-offenders, prostitutes, oh. Uh, persons who had been forgotten wow. and I think the Lord put me that in that place to be able to share my experiences with them and help them know they too uh, can come out of the ashes and, and become uh, somebody. Uh, right now the, the pastor of Central Dallas uh, Church uh, is, is an ex-offender wow. and the Lord had a calling on his life mm -hmm. while I was there and I saw and, and helped him discern oh. what the Lord was calling on, had a call on his life. And I want to continue to do that in, in the lives of many young clergy uh, in the United Methodist Church. Uh, so many uh, are floundering mm -hmm. and they're hearing things of, well, the United Methodist Church is dying mm -hmm. and, and all that. Yeah. No, 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 it's not. It's alive and well. And Amen. you can help it uh, to make it and give it new energy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've had a, a varied and a wonderful mm -hmm. ministry. What words of encouragement uh, or words of wisdom would you like to leave for St. Paul as you enter this next phase of ministry? Trust, trust in the Lord. And, and it goes back to the, the scripture that trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge Christ Jesus and God, and he will indeed direct your path. And I know that from my experience, and I can stand on that word today and encourage you to do the same. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Weaver, thank you so much. Thank you for your service to St. Paul and to me, even in the short time that I've uh, been here. Uh, you've been such a blessing. And I know that we're going to celebrate with you, but we also know that God still has more for you. And we look forward to how God is going to use you in this next phase of ministry. Well, so do I. And, and my grandbabies are waiting on me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Take care. Thank Just you so show much. show up and show out. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you, Dr. Faisal. Hello, St. Paul. My name is Hakeem Williams, chair of SPPR, along with Aaron Black. He's my co-chair, and we're here to represent the SPPR team and the overall congregation. We want to present Pastor Weaver and his retirement, his very well-deserved retirement, a token of love and appreciation from us as a church and as a team. As a personal antidote, um, Pastor Weaver has been a part of my life since I've been here in Dallas, uh, whether he was in the pulpit or whether he was singing, or whether as one of our church leaders uh, in uh, the North Dallas uh, Bible study team. So he has been there when I announced my first child being born. He was there when I announced my second child being born. So he has been a part of my life, a part of my religious life um, since, since I came to Dallas. And um, those personal antidotes mean a lot to me. I'm sad to see him retiring, but I am ecstatic for him to go to this next step of his life. We as a church appreciate him for the love that he has dedicated to this church. He has been a part of this church, as, as the old folks would say, since he was this tall. So we thank him and we appreciate him for that. Hopefully he won't go too far, but wherever he goes, we know that St. Paul will be in his heart and we will always be thinking of him and praying for him. So we thank Pastor uh, Weaver for his love and for his service. Thank you. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. My name is Joe Simon, and this is my wife, Vanessa. There is no better example of one who does good to all people then our dear friend and brother in Christ, Pastor Preston Wayne Weaver.
We became friends with Preston in the 1990s when he facilitated our son, Travis's confirmation class here at St. Paul. The class was so interesting and informative that Joe and I sat in every Sunday morning. But it was in 2005 that our friendship deepened. From 2005 to 2012, seven years, Preston and his devoted wife, Barbara, faithfully traveled to our home in Allen, Texas to facilitate the small group Bible study we hosted every Thursday evening. We credit Preston with helping us grow spiritually. We are so thankful for the support he and Barbara have continued to show our family from attending our son's soccer games and graduations. They have even included us in their family reunion activities. Pastor Preston, we appreciate all you've done for us, for the church, and for the community. But it is now the proper time for you to reap the harvest of all the goodness you have shown. Enjoy your retirement. We, we love, love you. you. Pastor Weaver, I'm going to miss you, but I want to wish you the happiest of retirements and all of your future endeavors. Hi, on behalf of Langston and myself, the Rosses would like to wish Pastor Stinson and Pastor Weaver a happy retirement. As young adults and millennials, we are very grateful and thankful for the service and examples you all have set for us in the St. Paul family. We hope that you are able to enjoy this time off, enjoy the fruits of your labor, and relax and enjoy your families, even amid, um, amidst this pandemic. Again, we just wanna wish you all a happy retirement. Um, and say that we love you. And once you all get some rest, we still hope to see you all um, soon, hopefully when we're all able to gather um, in person. Again, happy retirement and thank you for your service. Greetings, my St. Paul family. I am State Representative Retta Andrews Bowers and here to say congratulations and happy retirement to our dear friend and church family member, Pastor Preston Weaver. And to thank you for always with sheer kindness, love and prayer being the link. I'll never forget how that one phone conversation with you brought our family to All Nations United Methodist Church. And again, I wanna say thank you for all you do and wish God's blessings on you and our sister Barbara in your journey.